Hi, everybody, and uh, welcome to another Fan Meetups brought to you by Fan Expo Canada out of Toronto. Uh, we're your Fan Meetups ambassadors. I'm Jeremy Johnston. And I'm Angelo Corsino. Uh, we also do some admin work with uh, a local and online uh, Dungeons & Dragons Adventures League community called Unite the Factions. Yes, we do. Uh, check. We are an Adventures League group that uh, basically runs events once a month and both online and hopefully soon in person. Again, yes. And I think we've run almost every epic or special multi-table event uh, that Adventures League has put out. Um, I think there might be one or two that we haven't. But uh, yeah, we've been doing it for almost five years. And so hopefully you can come to one of those events. Uh, we meant to put some on at Fan Expo uh, Canada, which took place last weekend. And we actually attended in person. But unfortunately, with all the restrictions and such, we weren't able to you know, put on a games room. So we're, you know, fingers crossed. We're gonna be able to, yeah, like maybe Toronto Comic Con. Kind of curious if they, given the current um, reopening plan that's we'll out there yeah we'll see all right but today we're actually here to talk about uh the feywild um, so recently there's been a new adventure that has come out for the fifth edition which is the current edition of dungeons and dragons called uh, the wild beyond the witch light and so it's been said that it's the first you know hardcover adventure that you know, takes place primarily in the Feywild that has ever been written. So we thought it'd be a neat idea to maybe talk about what the Feywild is, uh, how you can use it at your own tables, uh, and you know, uh, where you can take it beyond that, whether you're the DM or a player. There's a lot of options in the new book for players, as well as um, a little bit that DMs can tinker with to kind of build the world. Uh, if they don't want to specifically use that book. Yeah, for sure. All right, so first of all, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of just real world mythos that exists about fairies and, and where, you know, fairies come from and such. But, you know, so Dungeons and Dragons has certainly pulled from those sources and kind of building their own mythos. Um, and you know, not every adventure setting that Dungeons & Dragons has uh, necessarily, you know, pulls the Feywild into it. But, you know, uh, it is a plane kind of onto its own, so you could easily pull it into any setting that you wanted to. Uh, you know, if it makes sense for your the story that you might be putting on or the adventure that you're trying to uh, tell. So yeah, it is called the Feywild with a capital F, and it is also known as the Plain of Fairy. But it's and not. And it's it's not quite on the prime material. It's not on the prime material plane. It's a separate plane of existence, and it's more of like uh, exactly parallel to the prime material plane in which most things that you would play, play in Dungeons and Dragons is set on. Uh, it has some interesting effects that it has as well. Um, where such as faded colors, uh, an ever setting sun, which kind of kind of does a twilight effect that kind of makes it so that it's like slightly dim at all times, but also kind of a nice little kind of ambience. Yeah, um, and it's not like a like a different dimension, like the plane of fire, you know, like the elemental planes and such. Uh, it, it's kind of like a mirror of the prime material plane so you know where you might have like a volcano or a mountain you know in the prime material plane or even an ocean you'll probably have something very similar but not quite the same uh in the plane of fairy as well and an interesting point on that is that same kind of volcano or like kind of river or body of water that would exist on both planes if it took you if it took you three days to walk from one place to another on the prime material plane the feywild has 
slightly different where you're not quite sure how long it's going to take you in the Feywild. It might be five days, it might be 10. It might be the same, but you never really know until you try it. It's a little yeah, strange and, that way the Feywild. And when you return to the Prime Material Plane, you might not know how much time has passed either. And um, there are some strange effects that can happen. It doesn't always happen. I mean, it's kind of random, which is why going to the Fey Wilds is somewhat dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you fast forward far enough in time, um, all that, you know, missed, all those missed meals, all those missed, like, uh, nights of sleep all catch up to you at once, and it's a bad time. Sometimes. Yeah. It happen every time, but that's something that can happen. Yeah, as a dungeon master, you you can really run wild with it. You know, you could, you, you know, here's a great example. Like, if you watch soap operas and, you know, someone has a kid and then two weeks later they're an adult, maybe they went to the Feywild. You know, like, you, you could totally do that in your own campaign, right? If you need to, you know, age somebody really quick, maybe they grew up in the Feywild, you know, and they aged that way. Also, there's um, just we, we forgot to mention this earlier. We have a question, a, a Q and A tab. So if anybody mm -hmm. has any questions while we're talking, pop it in there. I'm really good at keeping tabs on that, and, uh, answering questions that come up. Yeah, and if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, you can throw something in the comments, and uh, we'll get a ping, and uh, we'll we'll answer your question there. Okay, so yeah, how do you get to the Feywilds, right? So. Do you even want to go there? That's a different question. But if you did, how could you, right? So uh, obviously, you know, you could use spells to get there. You know, plane shift is, you know, a pretty high level spell that you could use to take some willing participants there. Um, Do not if forget it's... your 150 gold tuning fork. Correct. Um, you could have created a teleportation circle between two places and use that spell to get there if one's been created on the other side. Um, but then there's also just general portals that c can exist in between, you know, different planes, usually the prime material plane and, and the Feywild itself. So these could be, you know, like a, a clearing in the woods where, you know, there's like a, a moonlight pool or maybe it's a cave full of fungi that you know have a really cool glow or maybe it's a bunch of rocks that have been kind of you know arranged you know in such a way that it could be a stand-up portal or it could be laying on the ground i mean you, you could even use monuments uh, to act as gateways like stonehenge you know um, just stonehenge. yeah exactly <laughs> so you know I'm, and i'm not suggesting that you know stonehenge has anything to do with Feywild, but you know the the idea is that you know you can take you know existing monuments or you know build similar structures and have people kind of cross through um and you know it's, it might be that you can only do so at certain times of the day or maybe you need some sort of special magic item or permission to enter you know uh, there's all sorts of things that you can do and kind of you know spicing up the adventure to figure out how you can get to the Feywild. Um, I mean, this is like a minor spoiler, but the Wild Beyond the Witchlight adventure, you know, goes to the Feywild, you know, ooh. How do you get there? I won't say, but it, the, the adventure starts in a carnival that is kind of straddling the Prime Material Plane in the Feywild, but kind of not. So uh, I, again, you, you can, you know, kind of, you could even bring pieces of a plane into another plane, you know, temporarily, right? Um, and have fun with that. Yeah, uh, the options are somewhat limitless on how you want to build your world with uh, what you can do because of the fact that the Feywild is a mirror plane and there's kind of that like relationship yeah. between the two. And, you know, maybe if you move the rocks or you disturb the water or something like that, you know, then you can't use the portal anymore or, you know, it's because, or, you know, it's kind of like a magic circle and you kind of yeah, wipe it. If you mark it. it or knock it down. Or... Yeah, exactly. Like messing with a glyph. Yeah, so there's lots of fun stuff you can do there. And like I mentioned too, you know, maybe you need permission to get in because one of the common themes with anything Feywild is, you know, 
deals not not on like deals with the devil but you know like certain trades that you know hey, you might deals have. with the fair are almost as bad or or worse yes you're or right <laughs> yeah maybe you have to give up your firstborn i mean that that, that could be fave wild or fiendish um but yeah and there's all sorts of trickery that, that, that uh you know can be used and that that might someone might even be tricked of course into coming into the fey wild you know because maybe someone wants to get trapped or something now uh there are some other fey creatures that uh you know use other planes to interact with people um you know because the fey themselves creatures of the fey wild can be anywhere they are not limited to the fey wild so they, they might even um roam around in people's dreams or even uh the ethereal plane uh, and move in between the prime material and the fey wild and kind of you know everything in between but uh once you get to the fey wild you know it's like where are you right like, like we said you're probably in this dark mirror version of you know the prime material plane of where you were um that said once you're there that you know you're going to be in a mirrored version of the forgotten realms forever right um much like other realms like the shadow fell which is kind of like the the fey wild it's almost like if you have the prime material in the middle like one side of the mirror might be uh you know one side of the fey wild. wild and the other side would probably be the shadow fell the shadow fell they're, yeah they're, so they're, they're, they're they are quite similar in that regard exactly but but within each of these places there are domains okay so in the shadowfell you might be uh familiar with ravenloft uh ravenloft is a domain uh, that exists inside the shadowfell and with fifth edition you know they, they've they've taken you know an, a similar page with how they're explaining the the feywild and so instead of these domains that the fell has which kind of have their own lord and and almost like a godlike master that kind of sets the rules of you know how things work you know like literally you know, the, the laws of physics and time and everything are in I'm control by that person them. yes strahd is definitely one of them yes uh probably the most popular so the same is true in the fey wild with the way that it's been written now they call them the domains of delight now, they haven't really given us a lot of rules on how to work with these domains of delight. Um, the the Witchlight book really just talks about um, domain of delight and uh, areas within it. But, um, you know, there's certainly enough to go on, even with what we've just suggested, uh, as to, you know, how you can, you know, create these little pocket realms within this plane and each of these planes uh sorry realms or domains of delight uh, are ruled by archfey so archfey are like gods but they are not Very gods. powerful fey beings yeah and and like you you've entered their domain you've entered their their realm and, and they again they kind of set the rules and the laws by which things work you know they can control time space you know they, they essentially have the infinity gauntlet you know they can do whatever they want and uh yeah there's several of them that are kind of listed just uh for, for the in the fifth edition war uh, but there are two that are that are very important to towards the like the overall kind of overarching lore of the fey uh, and, and those two are the Queen of Air and Darkness and uh, the Queen of the Summer Court, which is Titiana. Yeah. Oh, and another one of note that comes from a lot of just like human, like as in Earth, the real world mythology is Baba Yaga. Yep. Yeah, she, she's also uh, an arch fan. And I believe um, she raised Tasha, uh, the, the famous wizard. Oh, that's something I didn't know. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, so these Archfey, they can kind of do their own thing. 
so hopefully you, you'll you know kind of be on their good sides and if they try to make deals with you you know one of the rules of the realms might even be that you have to accept deals that they make with you <laughs> it can be that crazy right so I hope uh, yeah but uh, the, the the two there that were mentioned um, of the summer court uh, and of the uh, gloaming court uh, are sometimes also referred to as uh, the seely and the unseely courts, um, which again pulls from a lot of you know um, somewhat known or popular mythology of of fey interactions. Again, suggesting that there are there are good and there are bad fairies. But that's not to say that the Seelie, who are generally considered to be good, are always good, right? Likewise, it's the Unseelie... It's always gray. Yeah, it's not like Unseelie are like the ultimate evil, right? Again, the Feywild is, you know, is full of fey creatures, not fiends. So, you know, it, 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 it really depends, you know, on what you're going to run. And I would even suggest when you kind of formulate or play with other people in a Feywild game, it's probably worth kind of setting some ground rules or talking about the safety tools that you use at your table because, you know, some of these things might not be fun for players. Or if you're not in the right mindset and you, you don't just kind of let go of, you know, the fact that you know what the rules are, you, you might be upset when the rules get broken. Yeah. And with that, I'm speaking from personal experience. People can certainly get triggered if suddenly, you know, they can't do what they think they can do when, you know, playing a certain class or if, um, you know, they've lost an, one of their abilities or, or, you know, if someone they know has been kidnapped you know, or traded or something like there, that. There's there's a lot of things like this where it's just always best to sit down and talk with your players and say, hey, look, we're going to have some themes in our game. Are you like, is this something you'd be comfortable with? If not, we'll find a workaround. That's, this is just common things that should happen in every D&D game. But when you're dealing with the Feywild, there's some themes in there that you definitely probably want to talk about with your players. Yeah. Because there's, they can, it can get, can get ugly. For sure. Yeah, so normally when you first start a campaign, you know, you, you might have one of these discussions before you start the game called like a session zero. But there's no reason why you can't have a session like that, you know, in the middle of a campaign either. You know, when you, you're moving in between, you know, certain storylines or in this case, certain planes or certain themes. Um, yeah, it, it can get ugly. Um, because, you know, some Feywild are very pretty <laughs> on the outside, but in the inside, they're, they're, they're quite ugly. So how's about we start talking about some of the creatures you might find uh, in the Feywild? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of interesting ones. Um, the most kind of fun and one that always comes to mind that your players are going to always want to summon aid of when they cast uh, Conjure, uh, when they cast uh, Conjure Woodland Beings. Uh, is you, they're going to want to summon eight pixies. Why would you want a pixie specifically? Uh, they have this interest. They have this spell that they can cast once a day, and when there's eight of them, they can all cast it on the whole party called Polymorph and turn it into a party in Texas. Wow. Okay. I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> that That's pretty broken, I'd say. So, but, I mean, like... They're gonna, like I said, the players are gonna want to do that, but the spell specific and chooses what shows up. So maybe you give them one or two pixies. It's gonna happen. <laughs> but if you give them eight, be prepared for to give what happens when you give them eight. Pixies have a yeah. lot of good spells for the, for yeah, the so CR that their creature is. They have they, they pack quite the punch. It uh, with their spells, yeah. Yeah, their their actual physical attacks and whatnot don't do very much, but. No, uh, that's true. Their magic is quite potent. Yeah, pixies and sprites, I think they do like one damage when they hit you. You don't even roll. It's just one damage. Yeah, it's, it's one flat damage. <laughs> but they can cause all sorts of trouble. Oh, yeah. Like um, With... they can, 
they can do things like cast confusion. They can do things like cast the spell magic. They can cast entangle, phantasmal force, polymorph, and sleep. Kind of at that point of the game is probably not so good. But the fact that they can um, do like just so much with, I mean, they're they've got one hit point. Let's yeah. Uh, so, so, but you know, and, they got and one hit point. That's if they haven't been given anything by the Arch Fae that has kind of, you know, yeah. sent them to, to fool with the party, right? You, you they, they could be holding anything, <laughs> right? That's true. true. But, um, yeah, and what happens, though, is that... Uh, so that's 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 one creature that always comes up when you think of the Feywild, the Pixies and Sprites. They're, like, some of them yeah. are... Like, the, the, the next common one that I was thinking of when looking through the monster manual and such uh, are the dryad, right? So basically like woodland spirits and such. Um, unfortunately, uh, the you know plant creatures are plant creatures. They're not Feywild, but uh, the dryad are. And so you know you can of course you know add you know adjacent like creatures uh, to to the mix because maybe the dryad are you know protecting. Um, you know, a forest of, you know, plant uh, creatures and such. Yeah, and like, and all, not all, not everything in the Feywild has to be Fey, right? Like, there can be no, that's true too. Yeah, it, it could be goblins, giants, dogs. yeah, and cyclops, yeah. anything. Yeah, could even be humans. Could be. Could but be. They're probably in disguise. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so with it, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to some of the more interesting denizens like that aren't necessarily fey type will o are like a good one that kind of fits oh, the yeah. wild theme they, oh, uh, no, they're notorious me. for causing trouble and luring the party into danger Golden and fey wild is a pretty dangerous place for sure yeah right, oh, so very, uh, yeah. other things that are very kind of like uh, the two speaking of like the two mirrors like uh, in terms of Fey, there are the Darklings and the Quicklings. Both are mm -hmm. somewhat uh, notorious, but um, they can they can they they can kind of sneak up on a on a group and do a lot of things really quickly because they have such ridiculous movement. Mobility on the battlefield is always fun. Quicklings, I think, have 120 foot movement speed. Yeah, yeah. The the Darklings still only have 30 feet, but um, you know. They, they can certainly uh, cause you all sorts of, of trouble. Yeah, um, there's fun little creatures you can toss in. But yeah, quicklings are yeah just insanely fast. You've essentially put the flash on the table. Mm -hmm. They don't do uh, a lot of damage, but for their CR, they attack three times. Yeah, I was going to say yeah, like they they can attack many times, uh, and they're also they have a really high bonus to hit. Yes, yeah, so they have plus six dexterity, which is yeah, and nice. and their CR one, which suggests that you know a, a level one party of you know four or five people can take them on. <laughs> you know, glass cannons. They don't have a lot of points. No, but they're they're pretty you, you, hard. Neither do players at level one. <laughs> no, but uh, they they are pretty hard to hit. Um, so another very like a uh, common creature type or race in the Feywild are the Eladrid. Yeah, and, and their monster stat block does say that they're Fey, mm -hmm. so, which is slightly different than the player option. Yep. Uh, and yeah, they're the type of elves that are, you know, kind of still living in the Feywild. You know, they, uh, obviously, you know, they, they can be in any environment but they're kind of like the native elves of the Feywild, and they they represent all the different seasons, um, you know, of the of the standard calendar, um, and you know have different abilities that go with each. Yeah, they're, and they're very interesting. They're, they're, and they're, ones they're... that they've put in the monster or not the monster manual, but uh, I think they're in Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes. Their CR is actually quite high. No, they're 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 quite a powerful quite a powerful stat block uh, for what they are because they have like a they have a bonus action charm a reaction charm some of them and they're 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 very interesting to use. Yeah, for sure. Like the summer Ladrin is got a CR level of ten, 
you know, so it's like for a late tier two party, they yeah, could same with the sprinkle some legend. some real real problems. Yep, mm -hmm. passive passive charm, um, magic resistance so for advantage on saves, and as well as uh, recharging mm -hmm. free misty step. And they can have an AC of twenty two very easily with the reaction. Yep, uh, that's the summer one. They all have different ones. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm just saying, like you know that. They make for some pretty interesting. Uh, they're dynamic. They're dynamic foes. Once your party of level ones probably shouldn't be going to the Feywild, but once you get up to like higher tier, the Feywild yeah, becomes an interesting true. option. There's a lot of yeah. fun creatures in there. And, and the other thing too is, you know, these could be allies or they could be foes. You know, so there's nothing stopping the party from making friends with people when when they're in the Feywild. It really, you know, depends on how you want the story to unfold and such. But then there's definitely some like evil Feywild creatures. Uh, some that, you know, even sometimes pop up in Fiend. Time to find out if it's me or Jeremy. Type in chat if uh, you can hear me talking or if you can hear Jeremy talking. Yeah, I think I think Jeremy, I think you're you're having connection issues. Yeah, I think he crashed. So what he was about to get into uh, is a creature type called that you can sometimes find. There he is. He's back. Oh, did I drop? You didn't drop, but you kind of your screen froze and you were okay. I was just just mentioning that in Descent to Avernus. Uh, you ran into red caps, so they're not just fey wild creatures, but they are fey, and they are definitely evil. They can cause all sorts of uh, problems for a party. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got they've got some interesting abilities, like where they can drop kick you, knock you prone, <laughs> and stab you a bunch of times. It's pretty funny. It's literally yeah. it's literally called like a, like like double boot kick or something. Can't remember the exact name, but it's something along those lines. Then it's a strength save, which some part party members are very good at, other party members are not going to be very good at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're they're one of the few creatures too that even though they're small, they can use heavy weapons without yeah, because a disadvantage. They, they use big pikes. <laughs> mm -hmm. so they use sickles for the most part, but yeah. Both of those. But definitely evil, and if you run into them, yeah, definitely going to cause you some problems. But not as many problems as the next one, which is yeah. Jim Crawford's favorite monster in 5th edition, and maybe every edition. That's hags. I, I definitely, like, hag covens, specifically, are yeah. incredibly fun to, to throw at a party. Yeah, and there's all sorts of different kinds of hags, uh, you know, in Dungeons & Dragons. So there's, I, I guess when people think of hags, they might think of, you know, kind of the wit, the Wicked Witch of the West kind of hag, like the green hag, you know, wearing the black robes, the white hair, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, like Angelo said, when they be, have a coven or when there are three of those hags, things get even more interesting. Because now they have spell casting. Yeah. Spell casting is always a fun thing to throw at the party. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, when looking through the Monster Manual or in other books where they have different types of hags, they'll always have, like, a, a secondary stat block that has uh, some variant rules on how to run them. So, um, again, uh, you know, you, when your players encounter these creatures, you know, they're, they're probably using magic to mask, you know, themselves with some sort of, you know, illusion or disguise. Uh, and, and but again, you know, even though they are evil in nature, you know, they're, they're intelligent creatures. You know, they're they're not out for world domination, or they're not out to kill every adventure. Maybe I mean that's up to you. But you know, they, they might be, you know, a, a useful, uh, you know, kind of story hook where you know maybe they have something that the party wants. It, it might just be information. It might be an, an object or you know, details on how they might, you know, get somewhere or get something. 
Uh, and again, you know, they'll be looking to make a deal of some sort. Um, and, but again, if you're going to get into battle with hags, uh, if there's three, um, you might be in trouble. <laughs> it's, it's, you might be in for a bad time, but it, it's, it's not so bad. They're, they're, they're very interesting, more, not so much for how you attack the party with them, but for more just the kind of like the, the sort of mind games you can kind of play with. Totally. Uh, where, where like, they, you know, they, you give them and they gave the party an item or sneak an item into the party's bag or something that's a hag eye. And now they can spy on the party unless the party finds it or figures it out, which is always, or they give them a magic staff. It's got, it's really cool. Uh, it's you know, <laughs> like a staff of defense or something, but it's got a big hag eye on the top and now they can spy on the party. Yeah. It's always, yeah. it's very good. It's a very interesting thing. Yeah. They're not like an end boss type encounter unless, you know, the, the party is very low level. But um, they, they can certainly cause parties difficulty in a coven because they get access to a lot of extra spells. Up to six level. Uh, yeah, yeah. My favorite is the Night Hag. Uh, I, and I'm pretty sure they're the most powerful as well. I think so as well. Either that or the, it's either that or the Beer Hag. Mm -hmm. So, but, um, other than that, ahead. there's couple more little ones that we want to touch on there's a brand new one that they brought in in uh with wild beyond the lich light that's the heron gun which is the rabbit folk and they're very interesting the um the they're, they're, they're quick they're very kind of spry they can jump and do all sorts of fun things and then the centaur which is another one that is very uh, popular within the feywild themes that are you know you get to be pat man of horse and as NPCs, both of these creatures are considered fey. Yep. Uh, that said, you know, uh, future publications or errata could change that. But for now, that, that is where they sit. Just like the Eladrin. You know, the Eladrin are also um, fey creatures. Although it does say elf in, in brackets when you look at their stat block. So that leads us to, you know, some player options. You know, so how can you, you know, kind of create some characters with some fey flavor? So there's actually uh, three races that you can play as that have the creature type fey and are not humanoid. So the first one's like super obvious. It's called fairy. Um, it is also um, one of the new races alongside the Harrigan that uh, came out with the Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Um, you can fly, you know, you can choose to be, a, I, I believe, a small creature uh, as well with them. Um, and of course, uh, you can speak the Fey language known as Sylvan. There, I got it in there, Angela. <laughs> um, so, I mean, like, you're literally a fairy, so... Um, you're kind of pixie-ish, uh, you know, in how you look. Um, and your flying speed equals your walking speed, which is always nice. But yeah, like a lot of the other races... Turns you into a really fast monk. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like a lot of the other races you can fly, you might want to be a monk. Uh, and then the other thing, too, is uh, you, you can't use this flying speed if you're wearing medium or heavy armor, which, of course, is not a problem for a monk. If you're going for like you know super fast flight and such, it is pretty neat. You also do get some fairy magic. Uh, you'll know the druid craft cantrip, and then you get fairy fire at uh, third level, and then at fifth you can cast enlarge reduce. Um, but once you cast you know those as per usual, um, you know you can't do so until the next day. But one cool thing that you know they've been changing with how they present races is that when you have magic in some of the newer uh, race choices, they let you choose what your spell casting ability is, intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. And we're guessing, you know, because you know, we talk outside of stuff like this, but we're guessing that when they come out with the Morden Canaan's Multiverse of Monsters, which is going to present all the races of fifth edition, we might see some changes that are similar to this for other yep. uh, races that come with spellcasting. That book is going to shake things. 
Yeah, as we move towards what some people are suggesting in 2024 might be 5.5 edition. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, so that's that's Fey, or Fairy, I should say, uh, being a small creature and such. Yeah, it could be fun. Uh, but the next one's my favorite. Um, and it's called the Hexblood. So you are essentially touched by a hag, so to speak, and, um, you know, have some of their traits, you know, some of their abilities. Like maybe you're on your way to becoming a hag, or maybe, you know, you were just kidnapped as a child and raised by them. Um, there's all sorts of things, but uh, it, it, it's a really cool race as well. Uh, it is one of the newer ones that came out this year. Uh, and um, it's in the book, um, Ben Richten's Guide yes. to Ravenloft. Ravenloft. And it is one of the lineages. So if, if you're looking up races, you're not going to find Hexblood. It's considered a lineage because you probably have a race that you were before, but now because of something, you know, like in some interaction with a hag, you've become a hex blood. So it is kind of neat in that way. My only complaint, though, is as a side note, is that D&D Beyond doesn't let you choose what your original race is before you choose what your lineage is. Hmm. So you kind of made one, so that's that's good. That's that's interesting. Yeah. So, for example, you know, they say that, uh, you know, you, all the lineages have this thing called ancestral legacy. It says if you replace a race with this lineage, you can keep the following elements of that race, which are any skill proficiencies you have from it and any climbing, flying or swimming speed you gain from it. So you could have been, for example, a fairy hex blood and keep your flying speed. Yeah, that's interesting. It, it, it's it's true. Yeah, if you don't keep those elements, you get two free skills of choice that you're proficient with. But uh, unfortunately, D and D Beyond, which I, I love to use for, for building characters, you know, I, I've totally gone away from paper. We always uh, say it's very good, but it's not perfect. And it's not f free. It's not free. <laughs> Yeah, especially if you want all these, you know, fancy options. But, uh, you know, it certainly makes, you know, whipping out a character once you're familiar with how to use it super quick. Um, but, yeah, so uh, with the Hexblood, though, kind of getting back to it, you are fey. You get to choose your size, medium or small, unlike the fairy. You're just – because the fairies are just small, right? Um, you get dark vision, which is nice. The fairies don't have dark vision kind of side note there but they do get some really cool abilities and this is why i love them one is telepathic messages so as an action you can send a telepathic message to a creature holding or carrying a token as long as you're within 10 miles of it and the message can be up to 25 words so you basically get the ability to kind of take like a lock of your hair one of your nails, one of your teeth as one of these tokens, and then you can, you know, kind of give it to somebody or put it somewhere and be able to deliver these telepathic messages. The other thing you can do is remote viewing. So not unlike, you know, hags themselves, uh, this ability says if you're within 10 miles of the token, you can enter a trance as an action, last for a minute or until you dismiss it or incapacitate it. But during the trance, you can see and hear from the token as if you were located where it is. It's kind of like Find Familiar. Except 10 miles. 10 miles is a lot. Yeah. Now that said, you can't make it fly and move like Find Familiar because it's, you know, it's just wherever you put this token. But it, it's got some really cool, you know, kind of ability. Uh, and then lastly, you get Hex Magic. You can cast Disguise Self and Hex basically once per day. And again, one of the things I'm loving that they're doing about these new races is that you can cast these spells using any spell slots you have after those castings. So which I'm, is I'm a lot different than a lot of the older 
things where it was yeah. once a day and that's it. Exactly. That's or, you know, because there's, there's often that question I see on Twitter, uh, you know, popping up saying, hey, I know this spell because of my race. Can I put it in my wizard spell book? And of course, the answer is no. You innately know the spell, but you don't know how to put it in a spell book. You need a scroll or you need to, you know, learn it the wizard way. So that that's Hexblood. Real cool. You know, you can add some real cool kind of origin or background stories as to how that happened. Uh, and uh, because this is one of those lineages, you know, you could be playing for a few levels, you know, or so, and then suddenly become one of these things too. So that's, that's kind of neat as well. Uh, the other options being Dampir, which is kind of like a vampire daywalker, and then Reborn. Um, which neither of are Fae. No. No, correct. I just wanted to kind of list them in case people wanted to look them up as well, though. Okay. All right. So What's the, the next one, one that we got is Seder. And it's a little bit sim more simpler than the Hexblood in terms of lineage and such. Uh, you get some... Uh, the, the most important thing like all the other, like the ones that we just were just discussing is, is that it is creature type fey. You're not humanoid. You cannot be affected by charm person, hold person, or any other spells that affect humanoids only. Uh, you could, because you are not a humanoid. Um, yes. It, it is also uh, in one of the Magic the Gathering source books called the Mythic uh, Odysseys of Theros. Mm -hmm. It's in Theros. Yeah, so... And it's got some very interesting other things, like it's it gives you magic resistance, it gives you like a little bit of extra jumping, gives you some good skills, you get performance and persuasion, uh, and then it also gives you the silver language, which is very nice and yeah, e, as well as some natural weapons. You can hit people with your head, <laughs> hit them with your horns. And I guess because they're fey creatures, they don't need dark vision because it never gets dark in fey wild. Not you know unless you go into a you know cave or a dungeon or something. Yep, and with that, uh, now we're going more towards our Fae adjacent races. These are races that are, that you can play as a player, but their creature type in the monster manual for if you're using them as a DM are Fae. But mm -hmm. and a notable one is the Eladrin themselves. The Eladrin creature type. Uh, so, for example, if you're a player Eladrin, you can get Hold Person cast on you. If you try to cast hold person on the monster manual, it doesn't work. Yeah, or Mordant Canyon's very interesting. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's in Mordant. It's okay. Cool. No, but Aladrin is in the DMG as a kind of a custom playable race as well. So, yeah, you know, it's probably where we were thinking. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we also mentioned also already the Centaur and the Herringon, uh as, you know, defined as monsters as fey but playable as humanoid and then the, the other one we thought had a bit of flavor that is similar just because you know it's kind of often considered to be nature loving is the fur bog from volo's guide to monsters mm -hmm. it's all um got some cool things like can just go invisible they're they're often generally known for being somewhat gentle giants so then, uh, beyond races, though, there are some classes that have some great synergies or flavor of the Feywild. And most notably, if you are a warlock with a patron that is an Archfey, I mean, it's literally right there for you. Uh, it's got some neat spells and abilities that just, you know, fit perfectly if, if that's what you're going for. Uh, I'll let you do the next one, Angela. <laughs> yeah, well, the next one, the next one, it's not per se, like completely like Fey related, but you can definitely flavor your glamour bards to be influenced by the Fey while when you take on your wondrous appearance and become like, uh, look almost like godlike to use your bonus action command spells. Uh, you can definitely take on like a Fey presence kind of like and flavor it that way, which is kind of uh, an interesting thing you can do. Now, other than that, other than the bards, like the druids, the, is a class that lends incredibly well to the Feywild. Most of their their spells, for example, summon creatures. That summon creatures. Those creatures come are technically Fey spirits that take the form of an animals, or you're summoning just actual Fey, 
with something like conjure with beings. Yeah. And um, isn't there a subclass uh, for druids that has well, some fey abilities? One of the, the subclasses, the the uh, Circle of Dreams, has an ability called Balms of the Summer Court, which is literally straight pulled out of the Feywild. It's, it's an interesting ability. It lets you do some uh, bonus heal action healing that doesn't require spells. Cool. Now, so uh, other stuff that, you know, just has a bit of that flavor that you could use, uh, you know, it's kind of on theme, is like a nature or a trickery cleric. Uh, you could be an Oath of the Ancients paladin. Maybe you're a wild magic sorcerer or barbarian. Um, or maybe you're a horizon walker ranger. Mm -hmm. You can get uh, yourself uh, some, you can basically find those portals to the Feywild and lead people to them. Mm -hmm. Horizon walker is such a cool subclass yeah. that gets very underplayed. Yeah, there's also uh, a couple backgrounds that are introduced uh, in the Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Um, and, and we. We also threw in a couple other uh, backgrounds that you know might kind of fit, but uh, one is called Fey Lost. So you're kind of like, you know, maybe you got lost one day and you ended up in the Fey Wild and you kind of grew up in the Fey Wild. Uh, a lot of neat stuff that you can pull from there. Um, there's also Witch Light Hand. So again, uh, Wild Beyond the Witch Light is sound like just from the title it you know it's the fey wild beyond the witchlight carnival is what i think it you know could be said to be so this carnival is the witchlight carnival that you start at you know it's kind of in between worlds so to speak and maybe you work there and so you're working you know in a carnival that's moving kind of in and out of of the fey wild but uh, I also felt that, you know, if you're an outlander or, you know, you're kind of close to nature and such, or maybe definitely if you... I can have strong fey ties with the outlander yeah. background because you can definitely look more towards like the, you're like, you're not quite sure, you're, you're closer to nature than you are people. So you're more in tuned with like, you know, maybe you even have area like contacts where you talk to dryads or something yeah. along those lines where you, that's, because that's a... you could and have exactly. just like yeah. touch of that or you can be a far traveler and be just literally from the Feywild. you've traveled that far mm -hmm. across the yeah. path. and you know you come off as quite different and odd to everyone around you because you you know you, the, you your culture and upbringing has been different okay and lastly we want and to say the last thing we're going to yeah, yeah. yeah it's familiar is uh they are definitely either going to uh, that are that can be packed of the chain warlocks. They can have this literal sprite sprites or fey creatures. We were talking about them a little bit earlier. And then your favorite. Yeah, just find familiar, right? So when you cast find familiar, uh, whether you're you know packed of the chain warlock or even uh, a wizard, you know you are literally calling forth a spirit that is either fiendish or fey to take on the form of an animal that you choose. Uh, they can also be celestial. Uh, so yeah. literally, you know, your familiar could be a, a fey spirit. Um, you know, that, that, that that's why they are intelligent uh, animals mm -hmm. that can, you know, kind of do things for you and obey your commands. And it's when they get killed, nice. they come back, right? Just cost that 10 golden incense. Yeah, but you're always calling back that same spirit, you know? So maybe, you know, you want to flavor that up a little bit more and, uh, you know, send that spirit back to the Feywild to, you know, to, to do something for you. Every once in a while, you keep getting killed. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, you, you, you could develop a, a good relationship with them. I don't know. Oh, maybe that's just my familiars. I don't know. <laughs> but um, there's all sorts of different uh, adventures uh, that, um, you know, have some Feywild aspect to them. Um, you can go to dmsguild.com. Um, actually, instead of putting out uh, adjacent uh, adventures for the what could have been the 11th season of Adventures League. Uh, they instead opened up their 
a community program, Dungeon Craft, to uh, you know let people write adventures with some fey themes in them. So you can you know go to DM's Guild and check that out. There's going to be uh, there, a lot of fey themed adventures that are coming out in the next few months because of that program. Exactly. That, so if you like the fey wild, there's going to be a ton of stuff on DM's Guild that's coming out that's going to have it. And and you know there are stuff from older editions or stuff that's not Adventures League that's available there as well, uh, or even some of the older uh, community created content or convention created content of which I can think of at least one. Angela, time for some shameless self promotion. Uh, I wrote an adventure uh, with a friend of mine. His name's Carl Severus. A little while ago, called uh, "The Second Exodus of Sylvan the Hall," which is a you are a group of elves that have very close ties to the the Feywild, and you go to their village, and you can basically uh, you get trapped in there because there's forces from the Fey Dark, mainly from Orians and Kutoa and such like that, that are attacking the village, and they're such an overwhelming force. You have to run into the forest and find Faye to get some allies and some help to try to help you survive. And it's a nice little uh, jaunt that kind of just touches on the Faye wild. You meet an arch Faye. It's pretty cool. Ooh, that does sound interesting. It's, uh, and it's written by me. So it's on uh, Jeremy posted the link in chat if you want to check it out. It's uh, something that I wrote, and I'm pretty proud of it. I, I really like that, the adventure that I wrote. But who wouldn't, right? Yeah, and it even has a really cool code. 007. Yeah, I know we got, uh, we actually ended up getting 007, which was nice. Yeah, very nice. All right. Well, uh, let's see. Did, do we have any questions? No. Not a single one. All right. Uh, excellent. That means we did a really good job. <laughs> okay. Or, or we didn't give anything that provoked any thought. One of the two. Indeed. Indeed. Okay. So, uh, just to finish it off, not so much self-promotion, but uh, to let you know some other events that are going on. Uh, this weekend, Unite the Factions is running All Strahd's Eve. It is our, you know, kind of Halloween and Ravenloft themed event that we put on around uh, the Halloween date that actually starts tomorrow. Uh, if you go to unitethefactions.com and check out our Discord a link that's there you can kind of hook up with us that way and we're actually also going to be putting on uh, a charity event uh, for extra life raising money for sick kids hospital toronto uh, next weekend sunday november 7th we'll be running uh, an epic multi-table interactive event if you've never played one uh, it's certainly worth checking out uh, that'll be from 1 to 5 p.m uh, and again we'll be you know, posting links on our website and our Discord server on Sunday to promote that and event. Since it is a low tier epic, tier one, tier two, you can hop in with a level one character and have just as much fun as if you've been playing Adventure League for years. Yeah, and it is an older epic, you know, so we're running it as a charity epic. Um, and it takes place uh, on the peninsula of Chalt, uh, you know, far to the south of Waterdeep, uh, you know, along the Sword Coast and the Forgotten Realms, a place uh, that even has dinosaurs. And if you like pirates and raptor races, you're going to like this epic. Yeah, it. Uh, if you have not played it, it is a lot of fun. It was. It's one of the better written ones. Yeah. All right, so thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thanks, as always, Angelo, for being My with pleasure. us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Um, so, you know, stay tuned on, uh, you know, meetups.fanexpohq.com for a lot of more great events. And hopefully some will be in person soon. All right. And if you wanted to, like, check us out again, as Jeremy said, unitethefactions.com and uh, pop onto our Discord server and uh, try out Adventures League. All right. Signing off. We got our biggest fan approval. Signing off. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Bye.